Alrighty. Welcome to the last of first challenge. First of many this season. Uh, started from P35 this race, and I did get the official uh, anti brake dragging pole award by Sim Racing Drama, so very, uh, very appreciative of that. Thank you, Sim Drama. I'm here with Tom Abermitis of the Here for SR podcast, and we're just going to go through the race, you know, see what happens, see how I did in the last to first. Uh, you know, P35, lots of upside, not much downside. So, Have you considered, have you considered using the uh, tire cooling strats so you could get a proper last to first challenge? The tire cooling strats? Yeah. Well, those are yeah. illegal. Oh. Those, are, those are also fast. Those, those, those are, are actually illegal. illegal. Mm. Okay. Yeah, sure. Can't, can't that makes sense. That. that tracks. So, yeah. I actually do think those were illegal in, in eNASCAR for a while, legitimately. I, I actually do think that was illegal. Uh, it is illegal in, in PESC to run over the grass or anything to cool your tires. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking of. Exactly. Wow. So, you know, the thing that gains you, like, a five to seven hundredths for a corner, bad. No. Mm -hmm. Right. The thing that gains you nearly a second over the entire lap, yeah, go on, feel free. And it is what it is. I'm not worried about it. That's why I'm starting P30, P35. <laughs> it's better content this way, Brian. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, let's get started. So we do the start here. I've got Ricardo Rico next to me, uh, Walter's in front. Had a pretty good start. Actually, both of my starts are pretty good this race. And, uh, you know, just try and hang on here. See some smoke, see some contact, some teammate to teammate contact. Love that. That's Patrick Holtzman on my right, and uh, Daniel LaFuente going off there. So, you know, pretty chaotic. People are pretty aggressive here. Just trying to find my line. There was actually more variance from the launches that I would have anticipated throughout the field from this view. Me too, actually. I was I was complaining about this in voice chat. Teeth really screwed me over here. I think it just went wide, though. Uh, yeah, usually it's it's a lot less varied. I'm not really sure what was going on here. Maybe people are trying different start styles. They were trying to break drag uh, off the line. <laughs> yeah. New strat. So here, this is a really weird situation, and I f kind of feel bad for Alex uh, getting turned around because of it. But he just went full passive mode. Like, he didn't try to hold the outside here. He just wanted to let Teeb by and uh, slot in line for the corner. So I'm here. I'm on the inside, and, you know, it's free spot. Instead of trying to hold my outside, he tries to let me by and just gets run over. So, he's a rookie in the series, rookie mistake. I expect to learn from it, and uh, it won't be that easy next time. So you think he wouldn't have been turned if he, like, held your door? Because there would have been no room right behind you? Is that kind of what you're saying? He would not have been turned if he held my door, yeah. Because Patrick is expecting the flow of traffic. If we if we look at Patrick's view, he's expecting traffic to flow normally. Or, you know, he sees too wide, and we're going to go through too wide through the corner. We're going to be a little bit slow through the corner, but he's got room to work here. But then Alex slows down enough to let me by. Mm. That's unexpected. Yeah. It's, it's, it's much different seeing it from um, Patrick's view. Yeah. That's the thing with everybody packed so tight together. Just if you're not being aggressive, you're being passive. And if you're not being like, if you're not holding your place steady, you're going backward in a really sketchy way. But yeah, Alex makes some mistakes here. Uh, 
Uh, I see he's got no draft. I try to capitalize on that. I think I do capitalize on that. Overall, I'm super happy with this live one. I think he just lets me go. So that got me up to P28, looks like, from P35 on the grid. It's a good last to first, first lap, I think, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, looking at the replay, I don't think, uh, I don't really see any missed opportunities. No. Which was the focus of this race. You could have gained, you know, two or three more positions if you would have started last last. So maybe that's a missed opportunity. True. But then I wouldn't have gotten the anti-break dragging pole award. Mm, which, tough. you know. Very prestigious. It from really is, yeah. I had a lot of competition for it. So. <laughs> no, real talk. I think... Uh, Mickle God and I were the only two that didn't break drag. Wow. And we qualified within a hundredth of each other, so. Pretty wild. We have actually been super close. Uh, for those of you watching who don't know, I'm working with BS Competition, specifically Mickle God. I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering his name. Sorry, Mickle. But uh, we've been working together for the Super Cup, uh, preparing for the races together, sharing setups, all that. And uh, we're just, we are really, really close in skill level. Some tracks all have the upper hand, some tracks all have the upper hand, but uh, it's always like within a few hundreds. So I catch up to these guys a lot quicker than I was expecting. And in general, my pace was just better than I was expecting. That's uh, Sedgwick in front of me and Mati Kaidisoha in front of him. 42. He's not under the Vendaball banner anymore, right? Maddie? No, so all of the Super Cup drivers actually left Vendaball. Two of yeah. them... Uh, or I guess Phil Deans isn't a super good driver, but he frankly should be. And uh, he and Mickle left at the same time for BS. And something happened with Mati. He, he got really upset or something, and uh, he and Vendival ended up parting ways. So now he's with a finish outfit, Inertia. Matty was once a lap down in a rallycross race uh, after getting killed, and I was in P2, and he was coming back through cars. I don't know if he's trying to get a lap back or what, and just murdered me at Daytona short. It was a, it's a good time. It's a good time. That uh... he, he apologized, but it was oh, it was a huge murder. Oh yeah, but it, but, it, but he said he said so. I mean, because it was, was Sedgwick kindly gets out of my way. Appreciate so just that, a breaking a breaking error. Yeah, didn't seem like his. He didn't seem like he had a ton of extra like inertia going in. It's like it looks like the break point looked fine. I don't it's know. It's not an easy braking zone. If you miss it by a little bit, I mean, it, it's hard to get into the corner. I don't know if it's just because the braking is so heavy there, or there's a the track feature causing it. I mean, the line's pretty specific. Yeah. But he really missed it. Mm hmm Yeah, I mean, he might have just gotten caught off guard by draft or something. I have to it's say... Something I expect from me, Brian. What's up? I expect, I expect that kind of a, a miss from me. <laughs> World Championship drivers... I mean, you can see it from all the incidents, like... The only skill that's just 
a cut above everybody else with all the drivers is pace. There's a lot of variance in actual in racecraft and decision making and uh, in the severity of mistakes that you make. You've seen that from me too, like in qualifiers. Uh, I completely whiffed my breaking point one time at Montreal and killed somebody that was four car lengths ahead of me. It's just a stupid mistake that someone at this level shouldn't make. And uh, of course, after that, I was. I've been working to correct that, but uh, yeah, the only thing you have to be good at to make this series is be really fast. The rest is kind of secondary. Well, I think uh, we talked about that on the podcast a little bit about um, that for a lot of the guys with this kind of pace, probably there's a lot of races that they can just get away and you don't really if you have a little bit of lack of racecraft, you're not going to get, you know, that's, you're not going to get yeah. uh, hurt by that because a lot of times you can drive away, you know, even in some of the qualifiers, like guys could even, you know, maybe driving away is not like winning, but like driving away from the top five, you know, you don't have to battle. So exactly here. It's different. Cause you're going to be P you know, 31st or whatever, <laughs> fighting with every, every car around you. Right. And there's no, like in qualifiers, you just have to, continue accumulating points yeah here yeah. obviously you also have to continue accumulating points but it matters whether you're p19 or p20 yeah the goal is a little bit different i think yeah but that is that is something that we've talked about before and i wonder about yeah it's interesting and i think the cars this year uh, actually, for those of you who don't know, the aero the, the aero properties of the car changed for this new season, and the car got a lot slower. Basically, it's just got less straight line, more drag. Uh, there's some other changes as well, but that was the most obvious one, and I think that's brought racing a lot closer in these Super Cup races. Barcelona was obviously a snooze fest. It's just, it's really hard to stay close and to get a run there. But, uh, you know, Interlagos and Imola, lots going on. This just pissed me off. So we see a car going wide. We see he's in control coming back on. All anyone has to do, all anyone has to do here is just take the outside lane, get a huge run, complete the pass in the in turn four. So but in, in, instead, Maddie, he was looking to cut uh, cut under. I don't know. He, he breaks too much to cut under. I don't know yeah. what he was looking to do. Yeah. I mean, just he just. I I don't see any reason for that. It gets worse, though. It gets worse. We're uh -oh. three wide here. And he just whiffs. He whiffs the corner. <laughs> oh. So by now I'm pissed. Like, he, he just swerves into Alex, and then he swerves into me. Big F. So, I managed to survive here. Yeah, I could have been worse. Up front. Yeah, honestly, I, I'm not going to say I got away with it because it shouldn't have happened in the first place, but given the contact, yeah, it could have been worse. So this is the first hiccup in the last to first. The pace was still super strong, though. I mean, if we look at laps here, 44-1, 44-2. That's as fast as anybody up front was running. What so, was the pole time? Do you remember? The pole time was a forty-two point nine. Yeah, it's it's uh, it, tire warming strats OP. Yeah. Pole really. time was a forty-two point nine. If we look at the pole sitters' fast slap in the race, <laughs> it's a yep. forty-four point two. Pretty wild. So yeah. Anyway, 
We gotta catch back up here. Maybe uh maybe they'll start using the truck draft and uh everyone will just be nose to tail the entire race, Brian. I think these cars already have truck draft. <laughs> I don't know if you're up on, you know, oval oh, yeah. talk, but No, but you put these cars about. on an oval. I mean anything yeah, the draft isn't that strong until you get to the high speed and then it's like whew, start catching up real fast. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen a truck, though. I mean, look at it. It's like, look at the front of it. It's like a fridge. So is this car. Mm. At least it feels like it when you're driving it. <laughs> In a good way. In a good way. Oh, oh God. Porsche's cutting the funding. That's good. <laughs> it's a real driver's car, but there's no question it doesn't have as much grip as a lot of similar cars. It's true. Less grip's good, though. Yeah, it's funny. This car... And it seems like most people hate this car when they first start driving it. Because it, it just feels sluggish. It, you know, it, you have to work to get it to rotate. And even then, if you get it to rotate, it tries to kill you. But once you start understanding the car, getting better at it, for me, I mean, now I'd rather drive this than any GT3, for example. Same. Probably mostly because I'm trash in a GT3, but, you know. Stop using that ABS, man. <laughs> You've got bad I think influences I, all around you. ABS we gotta, abusers. we got to take the ABS off, take the TC off, take the wings off. Uh, what else? What else can we do? Then, then maybe it would be okay. Take the wings off? Yeah. Please, please less grip. That's what I, that's what I would like. Hmm. I was with you until you said take the wings off. GT3 car is too much grip. Yeah, but if you take the rear wing off, I mean... Spl you know, splitter, I'll wing, just oversteer. everything. It's good. That's fine. That's fine. That was a pretty garbage lap. 44-7. It was pretty scruffy. Mm -hmm. You see lockups and stuff. I actually didn't realize it when I was looking at the replay yesterday, but... I did have some reasonably bad mistakes in clear over here. I also think my car felt different after that contact, that slide. I don't know if it was just tires or if I took a, some minor damage. How much uh, can a slide really hurt the tires big difference oh my god most people have no idea uh, when we were testing at Okayama for qualifiers we actually realized that on a lot of our hot laps we we're losing a tenth and a half to two tenths a lap like we would have one magic lap that was super fast and the rest of the time we're pushing we're trying to match it we just can't get anywhere close Eventually, I think it was Swellio who realized this sliding the tires is making a huge difference. Uh, it, it's not as bad. Oh, it's getting spicy. Big spice. I'll finish that thought after the race. This is the white flag. Oh, let's watch Very that again. Tasty. I was proud of this one. So like, where's the opportunity? Where's the mistake? Where's the momentum here? I knew he was going to be slow through the corner. And every time he was on my inside going into a corner, he would, uh... He would just... I'll replay this from Chase Cam. He would just miss the corner a little bit. That was very, very annoying to deal with. You see he comes off the apex there. I'm, I see him coming, so I don't squeeze him as hard as I could have. I try to react uh, preemptively. 
Who's in the green red line car? Two cars out. That's Alexander T. I guess his line wasn't that different than Maddie's. Well, he took a normal arc though without missing the apex. Or, or, or without, he missed the apex a little bit, but he Love took that. a more normal arc. Maddie, yeah, right there. a little yeah. bit right there. Maddie clearly drives in too hard. A little bit, yeah. And I wouldn't make a big deal out of it if it was just this, but it happens multiple times in the feature too. <laughs> So yeah, Teeb was just fighting super hard, which gave me some opportunity back here. I hold on to this. Matty just... <laughs> wow, I uh amazed you didn't get turned. Yeah, no, I'm... That was lucky. It would have been uh, a bad luck for, for Matty, but... Uh... Yeah, I'm surprised the rear end didn't, or it didn't, uh, the front didn't come around. I well, barely felt not. it, to be honest. Yes, uh, I mean, but as we know, sometimes it doesn't take much. Mm -hmm. So here, I'm thinking, oh, maybe, maybe I can get a run, but I'm not close enough. If I was right on them, I might have been able to get both of them at the line. Yeah, you had a run. But, uh, yeah, it's just not enough. They were fighting so hard. Anyway, that's uh, Alex Teeb and David Williams, I think. Yeah, David Williams. So that's it. Uh, P35 to P24 in the sprint race. I was pretty happy with that. It's Again, okay. It's okay. <laughs> World Championship last to first. That's uh, it's okay. Thanks. It's okay. We've got the warm up. Skip right through that. I actually do have a question about the warm up, Brian. Yeah. Well, do you have a, Do you have a procedure in particular for the the warm up that you like to do or try to do? Yeah, get up. <laughs> <laughs> get up. Uh, check my blood sugar. I'm a type one diabetic, so I have to make sure that's on track. And uh, you know, get a snack if I need it. Then sit down with typically five minutes left to go or so and just feel out the feature set feel out the fresh tires try and be ready for how the car is going to respond in weird situations hmm. so it's really just a matter of getting out there and calibrating the new limit sure and don't want to be cold going in i know maybe yeah. some people can deal with that more than others but I certainly don't like to sit down and go. I mean, I did just do a race, and it's only a 10-minute gap, so I'm not going to be that cold, right? Speak for yourself. <laughs> so, starting P24 here, got... Kaidasoha and La Fuente behind me. That's kind of scary. Then Williams, Teeb, Diogo Pinto, Pekka. Of these guys, uh, Pekka and David are typically... I, I trust them. I trust racing around them. Well, David is a... It's a British gentleman, right? So, come on. That's true. That's true. Better than these American hotheads, that's what I always say. Yeah. I, to be fair, given my last couple of races, I wouldn't trust racing around me right now. <laughs> I think I'm getting it back under control. I would never turn you into a meme, Brian. I just want you to know that. Oh, no. you just I would never the meme that, that somebody else made. Right. I would not. Do, <laughs> but I wouldn't start it. That's just want to be clear. I appreciate that, though. No problem. Here for our podcast, everybody. Go check it out <laughs> if you haven't already. Can't recommend it. <laughs> Can't recommend it. Well, 
that start looked more uh, uniform. Uh, yeah. 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 Here, oh, I teeth again on the start. Just lap one. I guess he was struggling here, and I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it was the same guy. I might have tried to pick a different lane if I had, because he's just he clearly lifts early here. You know, I thought he'd be ahead by the time we got to turn two, but no. You think that's just like a confidence in the tires thing? I think it's Was that not attempt. Confidence in the tires, more not knowing exactly where the limit is. Well, maybe maybe that's confidence. Um. You know, there's an adjustment to be made for stone cold tires versus warm hot lap tires. And since a lot of the practice time is spent doing hot laps, trying to find pace, um, I guess it's easy to fail to adjust. And it's usually a track to track thing. Like if you understand the adjustment at Imola, you won't have a problem in any of the races. But then you might have a problem next race. Sure. Yeah, I, there might have been some net code there. Uh, Mati really just swings wide. I couldn't tell if you had wheel in or if we actually had contact. I definitely quarter, quarter, swerved quarter, quarter, to avoid contact. him, but that looked really sharp. Yeah. He just. <laughs> <laughs> oh man I just was stuck next to this guy always chaos here I'm scared of people coming across I go on the grass but uh, all is good that back in front of you? Yeah, it's back on yeah, the Lego car. Love the Lego car, man. Yeah, it looks really that nice. Looks good. That's really good. Although I will say it looks better in screenshots than racing next to it. Shut up. I, think, here with I, I don't know if they played with the spec map enough. I think they could have done a little more with it. Yeah. Here, I don't fully commit to scare him when he wide. Now he's got less draft. And uh, I also later learned that he had damage in the front, so this is a pretty easy move to make. Do you have a live spotter for this guy? I do. Uh, Luca Crisafi, who so, also does all our paints, made our logo. What, so, like, it, I know a lot of people in, in Oval, you know, obviously, is more of a spotter thing, but do you, do you have a certain style you like your spotter to talk to you more or less? And, and versus, like, give instruction versus giving very, very basic where cars are around you. I know like everyone kind of likes a different thing. I'm curious about your preference. Yeah, so I don't take a lot of instruction. He's tried. Yeah, well, I, I don't listen. Was thinking, but, yeah. um, no and you know, that, that pays off sometimes. It doesn't pay off sometimes. But we've developed to the point that he doesn't really try to tell me where to go anymore. He just tells me what's happening. So if there's a crash ahead, he says, car's still right. Or, uh, it's a good dodge. Yeah. And a lap two slowdown that even though it says 0.7 seconds, in reality it's more like four or five seconds. Yeah. So. I am. I mean. I'm full on nerd rage in the voice chat right now. <laughs> like, I, I haven't been that angry in at least a year. 
Oh, I actually have died. to break them running out of time to clear. It's just not clear. I'm going that slow and it's not going down. Like, look at this. Look at this. Let's play that one more time. I'm lifting. I'm out of the racing line lifting. I'm letting people by. The timer is not going down. If anything, it ticked up during this. I have to straight up break, continue letting people by. I barely click it. Like, I, I lift again because I'm not sure. So, let's go ahead and see how many spots that was. Someone give this man a medal for not uh, uh, parking it in the middle of uh, the double left-hander. <laughs> I was hoping, because we were all too wide and shit was getting crazy, I was hoping that'd be enough to clear it. In a normal situation, it would have been. If it was lap three, it would have been. This would have been it. Or maybe I'd lift in this one spot. Yeah. This was after I already lifted a bit, because I knew I was getting a slowdown. So, like, I could have been a P2 in this pack or so, after that incident. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten cars. Oh. You decided that one last first wasn't enough. <laughs> Oh, that was brutal, entertainment value, you know? yeah, That really was brutal. Oh, I... yeah. Again, I mean, I really lost my head with this one. I'm... I'm saying it kind of amused in retrospect, but... It, it wasn't good. Nothing about it was good. Focused on uh, continuing to move forward. I see car, I pass car, that sort of thing. Cargo burr. Cargo burr. You know, I'm pissed, but I'm. It's in the background right now, and it's. I'm sure it's affecting my driving. Like, I made a ton of mistakes in the chicane in the feature that I didn't make in the sprint. Yeah, uh, that one little dodge, uh, really change the whole perspective of your feature here. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, we said 10 spots. That would have been P17. Oof. And I think, uh, who's at the front of this field? Sarika, maybe? Oh, no, it's Pinto. Pinto ends up 19. Patrick is in this pack, ends up 16. Wow, I guess there's more more crap that went down here. No, I love a good shunt, you know. Yeah. So P14 would have been reasonable from where I was, but uh, yeah, race changed quite a bit. I get Maxim here. Ah, here's what happened. So. While we were looking around at other stuff, it's too wide here, a little bit of contact. Maxim gets put in a tough spot. I get a huge run here. And, pretty uh, basic. Yeah, I think it's a pretty basic side by side. He leaves me a little too much room. I just get it. Where the racing is good, though, it's been good. I mean, it should be, right? We're 40 of the top sim that. racers in the world. You're 40 of the fastest. <laughs> Which is considered the top. Yeah. yeah. That's how we I got mean, here. It should be good, and a lot of times it is. Every once in a while, though, you just... You know, you don't, you don't know what it is, but, like, every once in a while, there'll be a race. That, like, everyone, for whatever reason, everyone just saw red. Yeah. Wanted to murder each other? 
I mean, there's certain people, you know, everybody races with their own style. There's certain people that are just consistently a little under the limit and get taken advantage of. Certain people that race generally really well. And the people that race really well often err on the side of a little too aggressive. Uh, I, I'm not sure if that's just a necessary thing or it's just a coincidental commonality. But uh, then there are people that are just, you know, it's a matter of time until there's contact. Well, I hate to be like, it's a sin, kind of, but I, but really though, you know, I, I, I uh, you know, I co with Nick Foster, who's a professional GT driver, and, um, like, he really is hammered home, like, a lot of times the real guys are even more aggressive in some situations. Oh, but yeah. In, situ in situations where you can wreck a car, like, you, you cannot do it. Like, if you're not super, um stuck in like if you're not well connected and uh, a big name like if you put two cars in the fence you know like in a year like you could be done mm -hmm. you know you wreck two expensive gt3 cars or something uh, it's like bad <laughs> or you could be a dentist driving an lmb3 car and yeah, yeah yeah not really care well, yeah, then, I mean, it's still your money, probably. Yeah. Your insurance or whatever. That's the thing about real racing. Like I mean, I, I hear you. And, yeah, you know, in sim racing, it's a lot less of a big deal to total a car, to put a car into the wall. But at the same time, I mean, all you have to do is watch a real race. Daytona 24, the GT field wrecked before they even got to the green flag. Mm -hmm. People are... People do dumb things. <laughs> People do dumb things. They're crying. I think part of why it looks so bad in the Super Cup is everybody's just so close. You know, pace-wise, almost anybody in this field is capable of running a lap as fast as Josh or as fast as Seb. Sure. The big difference is just the variance per corner and how much time we're losing in any given corner on average. And that makes it... that makes the situation such that... Yeah, there's a lot less faster guy gets by slower guy, a lot more equal pace guys fight tooth and nail, and that creates a lot of contact in itself. Yeah. I mean, in some ways, I think that sim racing is probably more competitive than real racing. Not to, like, hammer home, you know, sim races versus real racing, but, like... Yeah, they're, they're different. Have, they're, they're similar, but different, yeah. and I agree. We don't have equipment differences. We don't have, you know, engineer resource differences. I mean, there's a lot of things, you know, right? There's less of a barrier entry, so, like, in theory, the fields might be closer. There's more people that can, like, get us get a test drive than could even, like, a could afford a... Um, National Porsche Cup ride, you know. National I mean, karting drive. Yeah, anything really. So, ooh. big Oof. mess here. Just gonna take a look because it's Mickle, and I like Mickle. There's a lot of cars in there, right in that area. Yeah, so it starts up front there. They're too wide, and who's a VRS car? You see how wide the VRS car is? I think that. Mm partially causes some of this because he's so wide that he has to go a little slower on entry. At the same time, Mac, his teammate, is not going to be overly aggressive here. So they sort of check up. Yeah, they're a little slow. Yeah. And think it's David just a mess behind. You think David cost Mac a spot there? I think Mac cost Mac a spot. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Seriously, because I, I, I hear you. If we take a look, I, I know I said I wasn't going to go too far into analysis, but I want to take a look at this. Mac is breaking early here, kind of letting David by. Uh -huh. And David on the inside is just, he's taking a safe entry. Like, there's nothing remotely divey about this, right? He gets to the apex, he has. He scrubbed off enough speed and then some to 
keep it on the racing line. And that just creates a huge opportunity. You know, if Mac wanted to give the spot by to, to David, it would have been way more effective to just stay side by side here and let David go a little bit too deep, complete the move there, then Diogo probably wouldn't have been invited to be so far inside. But here, it's just it's a free spot for Diogo. Mm -hmm. Mac just kind of gives it away. Sure. And just creates chaos in the back. You know, Alex moves over here unexpectedly. Mickle's breaking to stay out of his rear, and then Patrick just continues into him. Kind of clumsy looking all around. Yeah, and it's not a good look for Patrick, but at the same time... Uh, there, there were a lot of cars a, moving yeah, around. Yeah, a lot of cars moving around. A lot of shit happening that... Uh, you wouldn't necessarily read. Like, a lot of that didn't make sense. Every time I was behind someone in line here, I got screwed on the outside. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> it's crazy, because so many people could hold that just fine. But, uh, man, it was painful. But, uh, I see there's a little gap here. I continue pressuring Mati. This is actually really interesting. Let's take a look from cockpit. He goes deep here. I smell opportunity. It's not perfectly executed, but on the outside here. And again, he does the thing he does. And I'm ready for it this time. Look at that. It is well executed. That's one of the best moves I've made this season. Has to be. Oh, yeah. I was really happy with that one. And he just starts moving over into me. I guess we're kind of both door rubbing here. And then net code. Yeah, he he got net coded pretty good. Oof. It would have been close, right? It would have been close. Yeah, but it wouldn't have looked like that. It wouldn't have looked like that, and we wouldn't have actually made contact, right? Mm. Like you can see, by the point that we touch, the trajectory is no longer as aggressive. Yeah, very much so. And uh, he just gets sent. That sucks. Yeah, yeah, it does. But then he PM'd me and called me fuckwood, so I didn't feel very bad. Fuckwood. Damn, that's good. Fuck you, fuckwood idiot. That's pretty dank, I'll be honest. Points for him, <laughs> sorry. Uh, all susceptible cockwood. That's decent. It's not really an insult. It's you know, yeah, that a was. Name. I heard that in high school, but like in sure. an endearing way. Sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't really know how that works. Here, I just, I, I got distracted by the fact that I just sent somebody. You murdered a man. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I really don't. I'm not out here to send people. I actively try not to do it, and I was pretty sure I did nothing wrong, but. Until you see the replay, you can't be 100%, right? Sure. And uh, I don't know. That shit just rattles me. Consistently rattles me. If I if there's even a chance that I killed somebody. Like, oh, Brian fuck. Lockwood has a conscience. <laughs> yeah. Well, I paid for it here. I just make a little mistake. I don't even know what happens with rotation here. I just stop rotating, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh shit, I might put a wheel off. Oh fuck, correct, correct, correct. And... Big mistake. 
Yeah, you can see I've got this uh, left rear damage since the incident. Like, I got hit in the rear trying yeah. to uh, avoid that wreck in the chicane. And that's slowing me down, so in, in retrospect, like, this doesn't really matter, and I don't feel... I'm not that unhappy with that error, even though it was an error I shouldn't have made, unforced. Um, yeah, I, I, in my mind, the rest of the race makes up for it, at least. I'm happy with the way I drove overall. Let's go back and look at that incident in the chicane. So I'm recovering here. I go a little wide. I don't know. What do you think of this one, Tom? Uh, I mean, yeah, you came off the second curb pretty hard because you you know, the arc was kind of messed up with the first one, but like he didn't exactly give a car's width off the curb or anything. Yeah. So I don't know. It's uh, it's hard to tell because like if you if I could take a normal line to the inside and a normal line to the inside of the left hander, he leaves enough room, right? Yep. But considering that I don't have a normal line and I can't hit that curb normally, right? and anybody who's driven this combo knows if you hit that curb at a bad angle, you really hit it at a bad angle. Doesn't yeah. like it. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't like that that happened, but I really did slow down a lot. Like, to... Uh, compensate for the change in trajectory I would have. I agree. Wasn't too much you could have done though with completely yielding the corner and I don't think you were really obligated to do so at that point. No. Not really. The only thing I could have done different was take more space on the inside of the right. Yep. Which would have helped yeah. the situation. But uh yeah, that that one to me is just unfortunate. What do you think about lack of wood? Is that a good one? Lack of wood? Yeah, is that good? I mean, I'm not a man in my late sixties, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know about no. that one, Tom. I'll keep working on it. Yeah. Maybe I'll workshop something later. Twat wood? Is that good? I mean, if I was trans, maybe. Mm, well, that's not a funny joke then. That's just insulting. Eh. No, no I think brain. The, you don't get any context with with the wood, right? So yeah. it's got to no, work in every situation. I think I think I'm gonna go with no brain, lack of wood. No. Uh, yeah. Smooth brain wood, maybe. Smooth, smooth brain, smooth brain. Mm. Fuckwood's tough to beat. <laughs> it's not very clever, but <laughs> it's good. It, yeah. It's no, good. Man. I'm sorry. Sorry, Brian. You're right. It rolls off the tongue. Nothing like a good name insult. That's what I always say. How many lives do we have left here? Uh, a lot. <laughs> this Features is are long. Eight out of 18. Features are long, They Brian. really are, man. They really are. All this shit goes down, and I'm thinking, oh, crap, I only have a couple laps left to recover. And, well, there's still seven laps left. Settle in. Oh, man, I should have had a cup of coffee. I did have a um, uh, toasted ham and cheese with jalapeno slices uh, to get prepared for the hot takes, you know, get the mouth uh, ready. Nice, nice. Uh Okay, smooth, smooth brain, smooth brain lack of wood or something. I, that's good. Smooth brain is up there. Yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of you know sort of working into that one. It's growing on me. I've been spending a little too much time on Wall Street bets. Oh no! I've, I've seen smooth brain a oh, lot. Oh no! Yeah. yeah. 
uh, other stuff I'm not going to say too, but uh, that'll make you murder people on racing. I think. Do you look at that too much, Brian? I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe you'll, if you just bought enough GameStop shares like three weeks ago, you could have uh, just stopped racing. You don't need to. Got all that big, big GameStop dollar, you know. <laughs> I did buy one game stonk. I'm in. I'm in for um, better or for worse. Probably for when, worse. When did you buy it? Don't ask questions, Tom. So it was pretty. It was. It was already high. Is that what you're saying? Oh yeah. Okay. It sure. wasn't like it wasn't like the peak peak, but. Yeah. Well. Wish you luck. Yeah. Hey, who knows? Part of it is, you know, I just want to look back on this event ten years from now and be like, yeah, hey, I, I was in that. I was part of that. I'm really looking forward to the racecraft slash uh, the racecraft car um, powered by GameStop. I love you. <laughs> so, hey, cool. I was going to ask you about this. Did you? Did you? Why didn't you? Why did you decide not to defend this? Uh, yeah. Because? So, if we look a couple laps before, man doesn't know how to use lap function. No, no, I'm actually not going to rewind it. Basically, uh, Moreno gives me a chance. Like he has runs on me at least once, maybe twice, and he doesn't go for it. He works with me, and so sure. I. That's gener generally how I race. Like I'll try to work with people. If you're a dick to me, I'm a dick to you. But if you show me some goodwill, absolutely, I'll pay that back. Like mm. at, at this point, right? I'm starting to lose the draft at the point where he passed me. I'm starting to lose the draft. I'm struggling to keep up with Oscar ahead, and he's clearly all over me. So I'm just holding him up. He gave me a chance. I don't have a whole lot to gain from trying to keep this up, right? Other than just, sure. you know, I could either fight tooth and nail for one spot, probably lose two in the process, or just let him go on with his race. Sure. I think in a lot of scenarios, the smart move is to work together like we did. We both lose less time than if he just sent it we started fighting to the net. driver. <laughs> Grandma's mad. The first time anyone said anything. Yeah, well, everybody's scared to after all those chat bands got handed out. Well, I think I think I told you, Brian, that when I did the BMW 120, I don't think anyone said anything in voice or text the entire race. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I don't think I had my voice shut off or anything. I think just no one said anything. I think part of it is in, like, multi-class races and team races and stuff like PESC. People have somebody else in their voice chat, a spotter or something. Yeah, so, they can just complain to them. Exactly. Like, if you don't have anybody you're already talking to, it's a lot easier to press the button and vent there. True. Well, then why are oval guys always talking shit? That's my question. Because yellows are boring? Mm. No, they do it to greens. <laughs> I've seen it. Ooh. Yeah, I've done that before. Yeah. Ricardo... Wasn't he the Heat, like, last year, two years ago or something? Wasn't he the what? The Heat? They were really talking him up a while ago. He won the GT World Championship. Yeah. He was yeah. on that team. Ricardo, though, he's fast. But, uh... Oh, no, dear. Yeah, there's Seb. <laughs> Poor boy. Poor Seb. He's fast. He seems like a nice guy. But I've just seen him make so many errors, unforced errors. Oh, Sebi, why are you so far back? <laughs> what happened? What happened, buddy? I mean, I I I know what happened. Yeah. Sad, sad boy. Yeah. Merp. 
I'm not entirely sure what actually happened there. Uh, it's pushing hard in 21st, I think. Yeah. It was already tilted. Yeah. Don't blame him. No, I don't. Stuff out there. It's packed. Actually, it's... Yeah, yeah. There's no least... brain pasquid. No, no brain nothing. pasquid. That's nothing. So. No brain something could work. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you, you gotta... I can talk, right? I've got at least two <laughs> brain cells to rub together. Okay. I don't know how many more than that, but at least two. Sure. So I've got La Fuente behind me here. And uh, La Fuente, if anybody doesn't know, La Fuente was P4 in the last qualifier race and proceeded to punt P3 and P2, both of whom were outside the top 20, stood to gain a qualifier position. Ooh, that drama. Oh, yeah, it was some juicy drama. He's got that kind of reputation, right? So having him behind me... Ooh. Not my favorite thing. Yeah, his nose looks like he might have hit someone already. <laughs> you know. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And uh, I'm driving... I actually clean up my act here. I'm driving pretty well at this point. But... With the damage, I just don't have pace. So I was surprised I was able to hold on as long as I did. And at this point, really after the uh, slowdown thing, I was a little bit mentally checked out of the race. I was still pushing, but obviously I had damage after that, and I lost so many spots. I made mistakes that I shouldn't have and probably wouldn't have if it wasn't for that. And another mistake in the chicane here. Now I'm under serious pressure. Don't intend to give the spot up, but... Uh... Yeah, it's... You're just not quite as uh, um, precise as, as, it, as it often seems when I see your race. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, actually. It wasn't like I was consistently blowing corners or anything. I just wasn't precise, and I was causing errors. Oof. I felt zero remorse for that. Yeah, I'll be honest. You're up on those little Kirby's. Yeah. I don't know where you're gonna go. No, Can't I mean, go if over if I hit that, we both go yeah, to the gonna, wall. Yeah, you're gonna kill him. Mm hmm So uh, Yeah, totally. How far back did he fall? Pretty far. Hopefully he learns. This terrified me. I was I was one foot in the grave. I was just ready to say goodnight. <laughs> but he Ooh. thought better of it. Oh, wow. Okay. I actually, I messaged him thanks after the race. Thanks for being calm. That, uh, that could have been bad. Yeah. I was ready to do yeah. it. I wasn't backing out, you know. I was going I don't to know where you're gonna go. through yeah. line. What the what? hell happened there? F. I didn't even see that. Oh, Seb. Oh, netcode. It's like oh, killing Maddie all over again. He kind of got moving over that. Yeah. Sebby, why are you tilted like this? <laughs> I mean, you saw his first incident, right? Yeah. We got netcoded out of, like, B5. Yeah. I, I would be pretty tilted, too.
He's an optimistic dummy. <laughs> yeah. He'd He's love just, to see it. I don't know. I don't know what he thought. Just moving around in your mirrors, Brian. Yeah, I guess. It doesn't really work when you're that far back. It doesn't really work when you're good. Well, yeah, but I mean, I'm not, so. Mm. All right, all right. I'm not intending to fight this super hard, but it turns out, I mean, that damage is really, really hurting. Somehow Seb has gotten shunted off twice, has no damage, and it is clear. It's crazy. I can't even see that much. The f my front looks fine. Maybe yeah. marginally crumpled. Like just a little bit on the quarter panels. It's just that yeah, rear I've... damage that was killing me since lap two. Yeah, but how is um, how is Daniel going faster in a straight line than you? <laughs> you know? What's going on there? That's what I mean. That rear damage did a lot. Yeah. And I don't think he was... If we were both running undrafted laps, I don't think he would have been faster in a straight line. Okay, sure. Yeah, this was tough. And, you know, looking at the replay, it totally explains why I was struggling after recovering from that uh, slowdown. I was just down on pace right away. So right now I am in the last points paying spot. You got Mikkel right behind me. And you know, I've been just hemorrhaging spots. I know I'm slow, so I'm not planning on doing anything crazy, but I'm also pretty focused at this point actually, more so than at other points in the race. Just trying to hold on. Mm-hmm. So you put anyone in the fence, is what you're saying. <laughs> I mean... Someone did make a meme about Lockwood Airlines. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't, uh... We'll send you to space. <laughs> Inquire inside. Mm, uh, I wouldn't know anything about that. Mm. I wouldn't eat those kind of memes. Of course not. Of course not, Tom. You're not fooling me. You're not fooling anybody watching. Lockwood Airlines. It's pretty good. Hey, it was still clearly netcode at the end. Yeah, no, I agree. But, uh, funny me. Well, I don't know if you know how airplanes work, Brian, but uh, they work with air, and you can't see air. Air moves them. They go flying. Oh, shit. You know, it's like a, one of those things. Oh, so are you saying the extra push from the air pressure was what? Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, saying. Gotcha. It's just physics, bro. Just physics. All right. Well, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Lockwood Airlines will send you to space free of charge. You don't even need to get a ticket. No. Don't even need to ask. That's pretty funny. Uh, just out of curiosity, Brian. Sure. You know, you're running the show, but I, I want to hear a I want to hear a w one out of ten pleased with your performance uh, at Imola this week. Honestly, I'll give it an eight. It's good. I was hey, very happy with it. You come to any conclusion? Um, Jeff sent it right into the back of me. I, I'm, I'm really discounting a lot of the feature, to be honest, when I give it that rating. Sure. So if I consider the fact that I didn't recover as well as I could have, I made mistakes. 
overall, maybe that brings it down to six and a half. Uh, but just overall, the way I was driving compared to the way I've driven in past races, I was confident around traffic. I wasn't making clumsy mistakes. You know, I'd, I'd miss an apex by a little bit here and there. But, uh, you know, never got caught off guard by accordions or... Um, no clumsy mistakes, lots of solid side-by-side -side driving. I was really moving forward. I didn't see any missed opportunities. And the pace was there. You know, my lap times were as fast as the leaders in the sprint. Yeah. Um, so overall... I don't know. I, I might be discounting the the feature too much. Maybe. I mean, but it seems 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 decent, seems solid. Certainly seen worse. Yeah. And you know, compared to previous races, especially in the Super Cup, I've always been more of a reliant on pace driver than racer, which is really really a complete 180 from the kind of driver I used to be. You know, in, in the Skippies, and this is part of what started the Racecraft name, uh, in the Skippies and in other cars, I was really proud of how I drove side by side. I came out ahead most of the time. I wasn't a weapon or making stupid crashes. I was just solid. I moved forward a lot. And in the Super Cup, I think starting from nerves in the first couple races and just kind of cascading into not placing enough of a priority on it. I haven't been a very good racer. I've a lot of the time just made little mistakes side by side, so I've lost a lot of side by sides when they happened. Uh, haven't been confident moving forward. Like I'm, I've always been okay placing my car in starts and during incidents. But Imola seemed like a shift in the right direction, where I, I felt like I could go toe to toe with anybody and come out ahead. Which is the mindset ahead. you want to have as a race car driver, right? Yeah. So, yeah, big plus, and the pace 100. was there. So, hundred percent. Well, is that it? Are we done? I think that's it. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for watching the first edition of the Last to First Challenge. There are probably, unless iRacing makes an update that renders tire warming useless, there are probably going to be seven more of these <laughs> coming out in the next two, three months. So keep an eye out. We're going to be doing this over and over again, starting from the back, avoiding wrecks, getting through the field. It's going to be something else. Last to first in the world championship. Not sure anybody's ever done this before. so. Uh, I don't think so, Brian. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you might be questioning my decision making. I do sometimes as well. You're not alone. But uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be entertaining. So... Keep an eye out. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.